Hi, I'm the Magpie. In this video, I intend to sort of give you my perspective in regards to the Waves audio plugin situation because I think it's very interesting to talk about it sort of from an outside perspective. My channel not necessarily being a music production YouTube channel where I give you tips and trips into tutorials <laughs> on how to produce music, but producing music is something that I have done quite a lot for a very long time, so hopefully my perspective can have some sort of value. Uh, anyways, uh, just to bring some of you up to speed that aren't up to speed already, and this is actually part of so sort of one of the layers that I'm going to talk about, but I mean, just me saying what has happened right now makes this even more interesting. So Waves, as a company, they make audio plugins. They decided to move over to a subscription-only based model, and everyone and their pet got super mad about this because it's sort of, yeah, a tiny bit messy in regards to, well, all of the plugins that I've already bought, will I be able to use them? And oh, this is awful because now you're gonna force everyone sort of retroactively to become a uh, subscriber of this thing. And I'm going to talk about this phenomenon a bit more later on, but uh, I wanna say <laughs> that, but I wanna say that the way I know about this to begin with is that I, clicked the video with a clickbaited title and thumbnail and I watched it and then my entire feed just like it was as if one video was dropped per hour in regards to this topic so it opened up like a door to an entire different part of music YouTube that I simply had no idea existed and it was just this amazing rabbit hole to fall down seeing as Everyone wanted to make a video saying literally the same thing. Then now, based on the initial response with all of these videos and everyone emailing and shit, now everyone is having to make an update video talking about how Waves is retracting this and going back to offering both their new subscription model and their old model of where you can buy plugins. I'm assuming. Which means then that in some cases some channels are going to have made two or three videos about this, if not more, which ironically is amazing advertisement for Waves and their services. It is just bizarre. I would like to count the sort of the the the, 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 the you count in regards to this. Uh, this is like the best launch of a subscription model that a company has ever made as far as marketing goes. Which is so ironic seeing that a subscription model is basically the way a company leaves an advertisement based model. Yeah, a subscription model is a way for a company to secure returning customers without necessarily having to advertise or innovate. So it's a very, very interesting relationship seemingly between customers and companies in this particular case. However, I do want to offer my theory in why Waves decided to move over to a subscription only based model because I think that nobody else has sort of talked about it from that perspective. And it is that they are simply shit faced. No, wait, that's not what I said. They are simply scared and maybe shit faced, but, <laughs> but they're uh, scared because they're having to compete with companies that already has a subscription based model. And since plugins in general as a market is extremely saturated, there are so many plugins and there are also quite a substantial amount of big plugin companies out there that are offering everything, just as Waves are doing. They have 220 plugins that they can offer, but a person might only buy one, if even that. It makes a lot of sense to have a subscription-based model 
simply from a marketing standpoint where you're like, well, we have 220, have, have them all, pay us monthly. Just to preface, I am completely personally against the subscription model, but I understand it makes sense from their perspective. And especially since the competition is just ruthless because every plugin company, as far as like big companies that have a, yeah, the, the overhaul of all types of plugins, they want you to be their customers. Because if you become a subscriber, subscriber to another company offering 220 plugins or even just 50 plugins why would you need the waves subscription so they're afraid that they're gonna lose out on this potential market which is yeah what i believe the primary reason to why they want to move over and silly enough i think now with being this clumsy about it and then coming out with like i saw someone posted now this apology email we sincerely apologize blah 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 they're still rolling out the subscription model now just a ton of more people know about it than we'd know about it if all of these youtubers hadn't talked about it which is funny to me, like it's ironic in a sense that it turns into this amazing marketing campaign for Waves. I mean, I'm talking about it, you know? Difference being that I've never, yeah, I guess I've never sold you in on any of the Waves plugins to begin with. Like I have a very different relationship to music production and music production content where like I've never showed an audio plugin at all, I don't think, on my channel. Uh, and it's interesting then with all of these credible sources that has told you how great these modules, module plugins are to begin with, are now the one 100% criticizing the company that makes these amazing plugins that they have told you as a follower about that you should get. <laughs> Uh, so truly just fascinating to me. Speaking a bit from my point of view uh, and me being a person who has always, I don't think I've ever made content in regards to it, but I've talked about it on the podcast and it's something that I yeah, talk a lot with friends about. Uh, it's really, really scary for someone in my position that this is the ongoing trend. And I don't think it's very healthy, sorry, uh, to, to other YouTubers, when you are comparing something like this to Netflix and stuff like that. Uh, because it's very different with entertainment subscriptions and tools and necessities <laughs> turning into a subscription. I know all of you are criticizing Waves and that's really, really good, but I think it's a very important distinction to make that the things that we depend on as creative people and artists and producers and whatever, as soon as they are something that I every month have to pay money to use, it sort of keeps pushing my head against the grindstone, is that a saying? So I personally have always avoided subscription-based models. And I mean, I even avoid it as the plague in regards to entertainment as well. It's actually a huge part of how I have been able to um, sustain a very healthy and free creative living on, for the last six years, I believe, a salary of 700 bucks a month working as a social worker and doing this YouTube channel and all the magpie shenanigans purely on the side for the fun of doing that. Now, uh, running magpie full time uh, with the magpie pedals, like building things with my hands and selling to you, super duper thank you if you are one of the ones who have bought that. I give myself a salary of like a thousand bucks a month so it's a bit more, which is very, very nice. Yeah, I'm still extremely privileged, but still a way that I have kept myself living richly while being on a sort of financial level, maybe at least not as rich as most of the people I come across is by simply avoiding <laughs> subscriptions to anything. So yeah, all of that said, just simply 
to preface that it's very scary for someone in my position that, that the subscription model seems very, very attractive for all of these digital-based companies, uh, even though it kind of makes sense from their point of view. However, I um, wanted to give you some perspective of, on me and mixing, which is something that I'm going to go into quite a lot now since I finished a new album very recently, I've talked about it a bit, uh, but I'm going to go into all of those projects, so then I'm going to show you a bunch of mixing and stuff like that, and I also intend to do some sort of mixing philosophy video and a couple of like, hey, this is how I do stuff, because I have never been very into watching and consuming like mixing tutorials and stuff like that. I have been simply making music instead for many, many years and producing it all myself with simply very limited technical know-how. And I feel like I am perhaps slower, but still evolving. <laughs> but yeah, so like 99.75% of all plugins used on my just released album are just stock plugins. So you can, I would love if you go listen to it and then you can roast how bad it is. But yeah, I would never, I would never need 220 more plugins, I guess. That just feels like a ton of lost space my computer. And I, I, I want to end this video with asking you, first of all, like, did you also get served a ton of videos in regards to this? With a, actually you can say AI algorithm, it's kind of relevant because Waves also launched like an AI search thingy for samples, I think. And at least a handful of people were like, oh, dismissing it as, uh, well, it's just a search engine, that's not an AI, but a search engine is an AI. And that's also like super scary and stuff, how all of that works. So I want more search engine awareness. <laughs> it's pretty important. But yeah, I really wanna know if you also got served a lot of videos about waves and if, that led you to go to their website or something and maybe you didn't have waves maybe now you have <laughs> it's just fascinating uh, but I also want to end this video with saying that we just did a podcast episode with a plugin developer called Replicat so I'm going to edit this down at the same time edit the podcast down so hopefully when i release this there's a podcast episode coming out just around the corner where we talk a lot about plugins and also maybe just maybe maybe probably probably maybe there is going to be some really silly magpie plugins in the future.